soil. And all I'm using here is Promi Promix HP. Um, there's no additives. There's nothing but the Promix comes with uh, mycorrhiza in it. And you can see here I'm opening up a package of Dynamico, which is also a mycorrhiza. Now what this is going to do is just going to help the plant acclimate um, to its new home because we are going into a bigger pot here. This is a one and a half gallon pot. And all I'm going to do is just sprinkle a little bit in. You don't need very much of this stuff, and I kind of went a little overboard on this one, as my wife reminded me. And here we go. Now I'm going to support the plant by taking it and putting it between my two fingers here and just support it so that it doesn't all fall apart. I'm just giving the planter a little bit of a squeeze and tapping it on the bottom to just to loosen up this outside because... Uh, as you were going to see here, we got a little bit of root ball um, and uh, no root rot. The roots look healthy, but this is really dry in comparison. You can see the color difference. It's very, very brown. Um, and because HP is mostly a peat, um, when it dries, it dries that sort of brownish color. Now, I'm just, again, I'm just lightly sprinkling some uh, Dynamico here on the root ball itself. And you can see the roots actually come all the way around the, this particular plant. Uh, again, I get a little heavy-handed. I really need to get myself a little spoon. Oops, a little too much there. And some on the bottom because there's a lot, of, a lot of roots on the bottom of this one. Uh, so we're just going to gently drop it in its hole. It's a new home. And you'll see it push it down there a little bit. And then uh, just bring some of that soil over top. And I just don't feel like I've got enough soil in there uh, on the top, so I'm just going to add a little bit more. And I typically do this just to give um, the plant uh, a little extra when it goes to settle. After you water this stuff quite a bit, it tends to settle and compact itself, and that's just because of the weight of the water. Here I am just kind of you know, lightly uh, pressing down around the plant just to seed it really nice, clean off the bottom. You don't want to take all that extra soil with you. And there we go, one plant all transplanted. Now we want to prepare our water so you can see here I just use normal tap water which I pull out of a bucket that I've had a stone in and in 7.8 that's uh, that's quite high so now I'm just going to take a little bit of pH down and uh, just throw a few drops in there I think I put about five or six drops in there um, get rid of the rest and then go ahead and just give it a swirl and then we should be almost right in our range there we go 6.7.6 .6 or 6.76 that's good enough for me so now I'm just going to take some of that water I'm not going to use it all I'm just going to take some of it and I'm just going to put a little bit of water around um, where that uh, plant base is the root ball that we just put in there and uh, because the rest of the soil, soil already has moisture in it, I'm not going overboard. I'm just watering it a little bit. And that's all there is to it. Now, the last thing to do is adjust the light in the tent. This is the Mars Hydro 2x2 tent with the Mars Hydro TS-1000. Uh, thank you again to Mars Hydro for sponsoring this series. Um, the TS-1000, that thing is a powerful little light. Right here, we've got it turned up to about 75% uh, because that's what they say it should be in bed. Turn that off. There we go. 
Welcome back to the first layer. My name is Richard. This is Ask for Help, and I'm going to say hello to some people. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. If you are a frequent viewer, thank you for showing up today. Now I got to find my mouse. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse. All right. So let's see, who do we have here today? We have Tim Postma was the first one in. Sergio from HVAC A to Z was number two. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm using a new mic today, so you'll have to bear with me. Hopefully you're hearing me okay. Uh, who else do we have? We have Build It Basement, my good friend Kermit. Non-fam's here today. Mark L. Baker, another very good friend of mine. Uh, DeWitt, hey folks, he says, hello folks, hear you just Fine. Okay, I'm using a brand new microphone today. Um, I'm not using my old one because uh, my old one is uh, obsolete um, for this studio. So uh, I am using a new little lapel mic here. Um, and uh, yeah, we got some things I want to talk about today. I want to talk about some new gear here in the studio. We're going to talk about this big monstrosity beside me because uh, this is the Voron 2.4-300. This belonged to my friend uh, Peter, uh, who you all know has uh, passed away, and uh, he wanted me to have this uh, because this was something we built together, and uh, I'm going to rebuild it. I've started printing parts for the rebuild uh, on my Voron in the back, which is right there, um, and uh, I'm not done doing the parts. Let's uh, quickly get to some questions here real quick. Uh, Tim Postma has, says he was the first to like. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I uh, appreciate that. He says, do you agree th uh, the USB flash drives will replace SD cards uh, in the future and then USB-C would then replace USB-A? That's part one. Now we go to part two. Let me answer part one first. Um, I think that... that uh, Cards and sticks are going to be around for quite some time to come. The capacities are getting larger and larger and larger. Um, so I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon. Now, USB-C and USB-A, there's a lot of legacy things out there that will use USB-A um, and USB-C as well. Um, so... I don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon. They've tried, USB hasn't become a huge standard yet, but USB-C, because it can also uh, carry um, uh, Thunderbolt signals, I think is going to slowly become the standard. Um, part two, what I like about physical drives is that there still is electrical power and there is no internet, you still got uh, manufacturing uh, power uh, for design for manufacture or DFM uh, for short. Um, I think you're right about that. Uh, if you've got a hard drive, as long as you've got power to your, your PC, I think you're fine. Uh, part three, what, what I like about SD cards and flash drives is as long as it's not wireless, it's harder to hack. Um, to touch your files, unlike cloud-based. And I agree with you on that one. Um, and then finally, he says, uh, question side P, do you also think it's unfair that 3D Systems is buying Stratasys? Uh, because in my point of view, he says, it's like uh, Microsoft buying Apple. Um, no, I don't think it's unfair. I think Stratasys has, has struggled for quite some time. Um, Stratasys is also the parent company of Ultimaker. Um, so I think what you're going to find is that 3D Systems, while they may be acquiring it, I haven't heard the news on this, so I have to, I'll have to go and look it up. But um, I think that at the end of the day, uh, I think that uh, there's, these smaller companies are starting to get absorbed into bigger companies, just like MakerBot got absorbed into... Uh, Ultimaker or Stratasys when they bought uh, when they bought it up, um, and now 3D Systems has come to the table and uh, is buying up Stratasys. And it could be because Stratasys, um, while they do industrial machines, they also do uh, educational machines like the MakerBot, and they do the Ultimakers now and and uh, all that sort of thing. So I think at the end of the day, 
Uh, I don't think it's going to be a, a totally bad thing. Hey, there's uh, Accord XTC. I have not seen that man in a while. Welcome back to the stream. Welcome, welcome. Um, bum, 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 bum. Anyone else hearing gardening? I don't... Is somebody gardening out by your place? I hope not. All right. So we've got uh, 10 people watching and six likes. Excellent. I like that. Okay, so let's talk about some of the new gear. We got, as I said, I got some new microphones. Thanks to uh, you people that watch my my show um, and that uh, you know tell other people about it and all the subscribers and the people that continue to watch. Um, I was able to uh, get some new gear for the studio, and one of them was this new microphone. The other thing was this little guy right here. And you're probably going to ask me. What is this little guy? Well, this guy right here is a microscope. Now, this didn't cost very much. I got it on Amazon, so it wasn't a huge amount. And you're probably asking, Rich, why did you get yourself a microscope? What do you need a microscope for? Well, I, want, I wanted something like this so that we could get very close views of boards and and, and things like that so that we could take a really good close look at nozzles, um, and really be able to share with you guys exactly what these things look like. And just to kind of give you a quick little demonstration, I'm going to switch screens here. I'm going to turn this guy around. Now, this is not a very expensive one. It's, uh, it has its own internal battery, so it doesn't always have to be plugged in. Uh, I have set it up right now so that it will use, um, and we can see here on the camera. I think we can see here on the camera, maybe it's frozen. It could be frozen, probably is frozen. So let me do a, a quick little thing here. Let me, uh, yep, yeah, we'll get rid of that and we'll bring it right back. Just bear with me. Um, I hate when this happens, but it does happen. I don't want a media source. Why are you giving me a media source? I don't want a media source. It's gonna be, excuse me for the black screen, but just give me one second here. Um, we have to bring in a video capture device. That's what we need. And we're going to... Oh, no, not that one. We want to bring in this one. There we go. Okay. So we can see my big fat fingers. And yes, I know, there's my, my fingernail. Not, not great. <laughs> Accord XTC, welcome to the first layer. Welcome, welcome. Hey, there's Justin Anderson as well. Hello, sir. Fade to black. Yeah, I should have just faded to black. So um, what does this give me? I'm going to open this up so I can see it a little bit better. Well, this gives me the ability now to um, bring in things to show you guys. So let's, uh, let's try and focus in on this a little bit. There we go. So we can see here we have caution, do not connect improperly or dispose of in fire. Battery may explode. Uh, or leak. Yeah, that's not a good thing, is it? Uh, <laughs> DeWitt says, my aging eyes. This is, I, I need one of these. One of the other things I want to talk about real quick is I'm going to bring in, I'm going to show you guys how it looks when we look at, at uh, an electronic device. So here in front of me, I have, find my way to sit down here. So here in front of me, I've got myself, um, A memory. This is a 2209 memory chip from Big Tree. So if we look at this, I don't really have anything that I can I can use as a pointer over here, which I probably should have gotten myself one, but I did not. So we're going to use this. Okay. So if we take a good close look at this, we can see that there's our potentiometer. That's what we would adjust for our current. We'll just hold that in place. So that's what we'd adjust for our current. We can see where our ground is and where of all of our pins are. And if we flip this over, and we can also see that this is a TMC 2209. This is a version 1.3. We flip this over, we get a nice look at the chips underneath. So we can go in and we can really, if we, if we focus in on this really close, we can get a, a good look at the 
at the different parts of the board, which is very important because if we've blown something on this, if we'd blown one of these uh, ICs or, or one of the resistors, we would know, we'd be able to focus down and I can show you exactly how close I can get with this thing. You know, for less than a hundred bucks, this was not too terribly bad. So this is all the way down and there it is. Look how close we can get. We can actually see the traces on that board, which is very, very cool. And like Tim says, my aging eyes. Um, so yes, my eyes are very much the same as Tim's. And uh, this is going to become a very handy, handy tool here in the studio. It'll also record full HD to the card. Uh, there is a memory card inside. It came with the memory card. Um, so it will be very handy in that respect. So if I'm doing something that's not a live stream, I'm able to go ahead and... Uh, um, record that and then I can insert that as b-roll into an upcoming video. So yeah, that's pretty cool. What do you guys think of that? Do you think it's going to be a, a good thing? Would you like that? Do you like to be able to see things nice and close? Let me turn that around. We can actually get the... There we go. And through USB, I can go ahead and uh, connect this right to the computer so that uh, you guys are able to see it on screen, which is kind of nice. I wish that it did have um, HDMI, but it does not have HDMI. So it is what it is, but um, this is a good piece of gear and it's thanks to you guys, again, because this all came from my YouTube generated revenue um, that we got this and uh, it's thanks to you guys that watch the show. So I'm really excited about that. Question, which is more durable in terms of product lifespan, an MK4 or a Lulzbot Mini 2? Um, I can't answer that question, Tim. I really cannot answer that question. Um, I I'll tell you why I can't answer that question. It's because, let me get this out of the way. I'm going to turn this off. Boop, there we go. And uh, we'll unplug it. And we'll just get this off to the side here because we don't need it right now. Actually, let's just put this way over here. There we go. We'll just put that over there for now. All right. So why can't I answer that question? Um, I'll tell you why I can't answer that question because I don't have an MK4. I don't know what the lifespan is. If the MK4 lifespan is going to be anything uh, comparable to previous models like the MK3 from Prusa, I think you're going to find that it will be um, a very durable machine, uh, a workhorse to say the least. Um, so that's something that I would, I would definitely uh, consider. Um, as far as how it's stacking up to the Lulzbot Mini 2, um, I've not used the Lulzbot Mini 2, so I have a Lulzbot uh, Taz Sidekick here. And the Sidekick seems to work pretty well, so I think that's, uh, that's okay. I, I think it'll be just fine. Um, Accord XTC says, uh, much easier to see, could have fooled me it wasn't HDMI. Well, well, that's good. That was only coming in at 720p. Um, over the over the USB, it only um, puts out 720p, so I, I it is what it is, I suppose. Um, I'm going to put these these chips over here because I don't need them at the moment. But it's going to come in very handy for doing uh, examining boards, and uh, when we talk about all the stuff that's going into this guy, which we are going to start taking apart today. Um, uh, I can tell you, let's go to uh, camera three here real quick. You can see inside here that we are using um, just the old style um, afterburner. And again, it's got red parts on it. It's got black parts on it. It's got some blue parts on it. The one thing about this printer that I know uh, Peter wanted to, to do was he wanted to do this in a two-tone blue. And he couldn't find a two-tone blue. We have, or I have been... 3D printing uh, parts in that two-tone blue. Um, so I'm going to make those changes and there's some gray parts on here and 
Uh, the bottom's not on. I, I've started to unhook all of the wiring underneath, but I will have to get inside and unhook uh, everything from the inside as well. So um, that's a big part of it. So I'm going to start doing that while you guys come up with some questions. And uh, I can let you, I love this. I love this. This is great because I can just go snap, snap, snap and start pulling off panels. Now, the one thing that Peter did when he built this machine was he, he put the, uh, um, what do you call it there? He put the, the foam tape not on the panels themselves, but he put it on the frame. So I am going to have to try and get all of this foam tape off of the frame. Um, I don't know how well that's going to come off. Hopefully it comes off with some ease. It seems to be pretty compressed. So once I have everything off, maybe I'll hit it with, with some goo gone and start pulling those things off. Uh, so we've got that side. Let's get those clips off. Um, we'll find ourselves a little tray or a box to put some stuff in. Let's put everything in this box right here. So we know where all of our parts are. There we go. All right, so we're going to start with these. These are all M3s. Let's have a look and see what's going on. Nobody's got any questions yet. So what's the plan for this? Well, the plan for this is to turn this into a 2.4 R2. So it's going to get a, a serious upgrade. Hey, there's Guy the Jedi. Uh, Justin Anderson, you offered to help me with the first layer kit. However, I believe you wasn't feeling well and kind of got uh, forgot, which is fine. I did not forget. I, I had a really bad week this week. Um, I will tell you that. It was not my finest week. Um, this week, uh, uh, most people that, that, that know me can tell you. Um, it has not been great. So I am going to uh, confer with you more on that, Justin. Uh, and we will talk a little bit more about that. Um, but you're saying here, uh, however, if anyone's looking into a first layer touchscreen kit, don't do it. Um, the first layer touch or first layer, I'm not going to say the first layer because that's not their name. That's my name. Um, not uh, not their finest hour, let me tell you. Now, there's the Poor Boy Channel. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Hopefully you're doing well. I'm going to get all these parts out of here. We'll sort them later. Um, first layer started up after I was already established on the Internet, uh, not only as, as you know, uh, I guess... Uh, somewhat of an authority. I don't know if you guys consider me an authority or not, but um, in the 3D printing realm. But uh, they started up and they started selling products. Uh, and I have spoken with them and asked them if they would change their name. And I basically got told to go pound salt. Um, I've never liked uh, companies that, that like to ride on the coattails of others. Um, I'm not a big fan of individuals that do that because I don't think it's right. I think that if you are going to, if you're going to do that, um, then you're not a very honorable business. And that's just my personal opinion. Um, other people might have other opinions. Uh, Justin says their firmware is horrible. It's broken so badly. It's not even working at all. Um, I had the developer, and he couldn't even get his own code to work correctly. Hmm. Well, then they shouldn't be using my name because then it makes me look bad. That's what I say. How do you guys feel about that? I'm, I'll leave that guy up to you guys. Printing temp and flow towers for the new fill for a new filament. Yes, definitely not right. I agree with you. And I've gotten so many requests for to to fix their stuff because people think it's me and in all honesty it's not me so why should i fix their stuff 
right? Come on, get out of there. I shouldn't have to fix their stuff. And, and that's, um, I don't like to bash companies or individuals, but this is a company that I feel is just doing something wrong. Um, so my caution to everybody is if you are going to uh, get into business with somebody, send them a cease and desist letter. Uh, I would, but they're in the States and um, they're not in Canada and that's a big problem. So, hey, there's Devin Bonzer. Hello, sir. Uh, they shouldn't even have a company name at, uh, at this point. It's, it's horrible. Uh, took me over a week to receive help and they just ignored it. And I just dropped some parts on the floor, which is not unusual because that happens. That's only a, it's only a hammer nut. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Um, that's not connected, so let's get that off of there. Um, which company are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about First Layer. I took a bathroom break. <laughs> Tim, you're entitled to a bathroom break once in a while. You are entitled to a bathroom break. Let's get all these panels off of here. Man, I put some of these on pretty tight. Oh, oh, that one just came right out. And there we go. Get that back panel off there. I may end up replacing those panels. I haven't decided yet. Get these off the back. Hey there, Stephen Reimer. Hi, Stephen. Yeah, I just kind of think what they did was a little underhanded, that's all. And uh, unfortunately, because they're in the States, it's a lot tougher trying to prove that... Um, without a lengthy court battle that they did anything wrong. So that's that's the, the drawback to that, unfortunately. Let me get the top off of this thing. I'm just going to stand up here. You guys aren't going to be able to see me. Now I'm going to be stripping this thing right down to its core. So all of this is going to have to come off. Um, all the panels will come off. The handles will come off. And uh, yeah, it'll just, it will just be one of those situations. There we go. So those are off. All the panels are off now. So yeah, the idea here is to strip this right down, get everything off of it, and uh, rebuild it from the ground up. I'm going to be putting in a stealth burner with a clockwork too. Um, I do have to get myself another little motor uh, we're going to be putting in the Fetus um, Voron uh, Dragon X high flow hot end on this with a 0.4 nozzle. This is a 350 by 350 build. Um, it's got a, it's a decent kit. It's it's a decent thickness of bed. Um, 
The problem with it was is that while it worked, there would be issues after about three or four prints, it would stop printing or it would jam up. I'm not sure if that was due to user error or not. I wasn't there 24 seven watching them, but I'm gonna strip out all of the cabling. This is going to be using CAN bus. So let me see if I can bring that a little bit closer. This is gonna be using CAN bus. So all of this is gonna go away. Everything's gonna get uh, stripped right down. I'll get it right down to the frame and then get all the frame cleaned up. Uh, hopefully I can get off all of this uh, material. I may have to get some new belts, um, which I'm probably going to have to do um, because of just the size of this, but that's not a, that's not a huge deal. I think that'll be fine. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's see, what do we have going on? Uh, poor boy says, the more I use PEI, the more I'm loving it. Great, Jim. He says, good day, Richard. Yeah, companies uh, that ride on the success business are despicable, I agree. Um, do these Voron printers actually print? Everyone I watch, they're always tearing them apart, asking for a friend. Uh, Guy the Jedi, they do work. Mine works very well. Um, I really like mine. I, I, I got nothing bad to say about it, to be perfectly honest with you. I really love mine. I think it's, uh, uh, it works well and, and, uh, it does exactly what I want it to do. I did have to, uh, replace the nozzle on mine because, uh, I wasn't watching and, um, this was Richard being an idiot, which is not unusual. Ask Tim, he can tell you. Richard has his idiot moments. Um, <laughs> Tim will tell you that. He's not shy. He's not shy about telling people that. Richard has his idiot moments. And Richard will admit to that too. I know I'm talking about myself in the third person. Um, but have, tearing this one down and doing a complete overhaul and upgrade on it, I think is going to be really good. And then what I'm going to do with this printer after I'm done with it is yes, it will go into my setup. Um, so it'll be, it will be part of, of the fleet of printers here. Um, I am going to be cleaning house here for my local friends in Calgary. Um, I'm gonna be doing a yard sale here pretty soon uh, and getting rid of all of the uh, printers that I don't use anymore that are just sitting on shelves collecting dust. I will go through, fix them up. Yep, there go the, the panels. I will go through and fix them up and make sure that they're all working uh, amazingly well. And then, you know, somebody can come over and not a cat, LOL. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. I'm glad you're here to confirm my, my uh... Tim's also been around when I've been, been perturbed. He's actually seen me See me mad. Ah, guy wants to know where you got your panels. I got mine from a local guy here in Calgary. Tim has a local source as well, I believe, for panels. Uh, he didn't go through my guy, he went through his own guy, which is fine. Um, Tim, you will be happy to know that uh, the cookie queen is making cookies today. She is up in the kitchen. I can hear her now. She's making cookies. I want to hear what you guys have to um, talk about and, and ask about when it comes to 3D printing. Like that's what this show is all about. It's called Ask for Help for a reason. And uh, I'm here to help. Um, I, I'll admit I don't know it all. I like to think I know it all, but I don't know it all. I'm learning, just like everybody else. The fun part is tearing this all apart. That's what I think, anyway. Maybe that's just me. Mmm, cookies, yes. The cookie queen is in the kitchen, Tim. So I know you've got a couple of things that you got to drop off to me this week, so um, I will make sure there are cookies for you. What's a good flow test? 
Um, there are several good flow tests out there. Uh, there is um, one on principles that will help you with your flow. Um, depending on the, why is that one not coming off? Depending on the, um, actually best place for a flow test in all honesty is I would go to Michael Law's Teaching Tech. I'd go to the Teaching Tech um, GitHub. He has uh, a great flow test over there. He's got uh, a system that will allow you to um, put in certain parameters and in all honesty, you can't get a better setup. That thing will help you tune your printers to no end. And then I would also use the Ellis tuning guide um, as well. That, that's also a great, uh, great way. And he walks you through all the steps to do a flow test. Accord XTC, question on Octoprint camera setups. I was using an uh, Arducan 64 megabit, um, but it has its quirks. Any camera someone is using uh, that's great low light and plug and play with Octoprint. Any uh, of the Microsoft webcams, any of the Logitech webcams, they all work flawlessly with Octoprint. You can get a Logitech C250 or 270, something like that, for about 25 bucks. And it's a very good camera. It's a camera I would recommend to be honest with you. And there go the rest of the panels. They just all fell over. Um, it's something that I would, I would do. Yep, absolutely. All right, so I gotta spin this thing around because it's so big. Things are falling off the desk. We're gonna... There we go. Things are all falling off the desk. All right, so let's do this side. Hey, there's 3D HP. Uh, Jerry, I am so sorry, man, that I have not been able to join your live streams the last few weeks. Um, I've either been sick or incredibly busy. Um, and I apologize. I, I do want to get over to, to your channel, Jerry, and, uh, um, sit in on, on one of your rap sessions because I enjoy them. I know every week you keep inviting me and I, I keep saying I'm going to try and get there and I somehow never do seem to get there. No worries, you're always welcome. Well, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to be doing a members only live stream here pretty soon. Um, memberships are one way that you can show your support for the channel. Um, and all of us that are on YouTube now, I think we've all pretty much, we're at that stage where we can, we have um, YouTube memberships. Um, DeWitt's got them now. Uh, I also believe that uh, um, Build It Basement's got them, Kermit's got it. Uh, um, I want to say that uh, uh, the Poor Boy channel has them, uh, but he's not quite there yet. He's still got a little ways to go before he hits his, his thousand viewers or his thousand subscribers. I hope that you, if you haven't yet, go over and subscribe to the Poor Boy channel. And uh, I've got to make him yet a moderator here. One of these days I will. I will get around to that. Boy, today's been a pretty quiet day. And I keep dropping those dang things on the floor. That's okay, I'll vacuum them all up later. I'll vacuum them all up later. Taking this, this printer apart and stripping it down is, you know, it's a good good solid few hours to do that. Um, and then organizing all of the nuts and bolts that you take out. Um, yeah, it can, it can be a little daunting. Oh, 
Four voices. What do I have? Um, you have um, good friends. I was just telling people to subscribe to your channel so we can get you over a thousand subscribers so your channel can get monetized so that you can have um, start your memberships. Hey, there's Jose Ferreira. Hello, sir. You know what, uh, Jerry, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to make him a moderator so he can put a link to his own channel in here. That is a moderator. There we go. All right. So now the poor boy channel can put in links to his channel, which, uh, you guys, if you haven't already subscribed to him, I think most everybody that's in here today has subscribed to him anyway, but, um, yeah, I think everybody's pretty much subscribed to him, but, um, spread it around, spread the love. He's a good guy. He's, he's, uh, working right now on his, um, uh, ender wire or ender switch wire conversion. So it's something that, that, you know, we've got a little group of people here that, that go from channel to channel and, uh, you guys are most, all of them that are here. Um, you guys all know about my channel. You all know about, uh, uh, the poor boy channel, you know, about build it basement, you know, about, uh, 3d HP. Um, you also know about DeWitt 3d Canada, my good friend, Tim. Um, and while that's great, um, we really always want to make sure that, that you guys, um, are, you know, we love having you with us, but if you could, we would ask one little favor of you and that's to, you know, tell some friends about you, uh, about our channels and, and spread the love. And, uh, you know, we all kind of do the same thing, but all in very different ways. Uh, I'm more of a, uh, what do you say? I guess I'm, I'm the grumpy guy. I'm the grumpy guy. Um, I'm more of the straightforward shooter guy. And, uh, um, we, <laughs> I'm going to tell this because, uh, um, all right, Sergio, you have yourself a good trip. Drive safe. Um, I, I want to, I was talking with, with Kermit from build it basement and we, he sent me a, a meme one day, uh, with a Smurf. And, uh, he, he had me as Papa Smurf. He depicted me as Papa Smurf, which I went, okay. And then, uh, he was, uh, uh, I think he was tech Smurf or something like that. I can't remember, but, uh, uh, we, we dubbed Tim, um, uh, and Tim from DeWitt. And, and I don't mean this as an insult to Tim at all because, uh, you know, Tim is like a brother to me. Um, but we dubbed Tim to be clumsy Smurf because he's always seems to be hurting himself on our streams. So, um, and then, uh, Golden Jaguar. I uh, can't remember what we dubbed him. Um, uh, and then there was, uh, the poor boy channel. Um, I think we, we dubbed him as, uh, as clum or not clumsy Smurf, but country Smurf. Um, Testing the new status. There you go. Uh, so yeah, we, we were just kind of messing around and, and, uh, uh, at some point in time, we are still working on doing a, a, a round table channel, uh, where it'll be DeWitt, myself, um, uh, and, uh, uh, build it basement, uh, where we get together and we talk to you guys, uh, about, uh, 3d printing news. Uh, 3D printing, uh, um, experiences, we cover questions, uh, and we'll have guests from time to time that will come in. We're not sure who's going to host, but somebody will be hosting. Uh, we may send the hosting around to each channel, uh, over time, but that's something we're working on. Uh, and it's something that, that, uh, I think will be a benefit to the, to the community. I mean, there's a lot of great guys out there like, uh, Steve builds. I love watching his stuff. 
Uh, there's other channels I'm, I'm not a big fan of, um, just because of the way that they deliver their content. But, uh, I mean, I'm no expert either. I mean, I'm not an expert in delivering content. Justin Anderson says, so uh, here is a question about Clipper. I still run Marlin, but is there a cheap way into Clipper? Or are the Pi or Sonic pads about the cheapest way to get started? Um, the, uh, the best way is through a Pi. Um, it can be an orange Pi. It can be any kind. Of, it can be anything that runs Linux. Um, so any of the micro computers, uh, it can be any of those that run Linux. I heard a ding. I don't know why I heard a ding, but I heard a ding. Um, so yeah, I would say that, uh, um, a Pi is your best way in, uh, Steven S sales. I hope I said that right. Steven sales. Welcome Steven sales. You must be new. Uh, what gear are you replacing? Um, on the Voron 2.4. I'm actually going to be replacing almost everything. Um, I'm keeping the motors, I'm keeping the bed. Uh, the hot end is getting a complete replacement. Um, all of the electronics in the bottom are getting a complete replacement. We are going with uh, a, a cam system. Um, we are using all Big Tree Tech. Uh, products. We're going to be putting a five inch touch screen on the front so that we can use clipper screen. Um, what else are we doing to this thing? Uh, it is uh, going to be getting some, some uh, big ventilation. Um, it's going to, yeah, it's going to get some, some uh, much bigger ventilation. We're going to be doing a lot of different uh, printing in this with a lot of different materials. Uh, so I want to be able to hit those higher temps. Um, I won't be able to get to peak temps without having a heated chamber, but I know on mine, because I put a thermistor in my, my a chamber thermistor in mine, that, um, that, that it, it can get up over 65 degrees inside the chamber. Uh, so it does get pretty warm in there. So, you know, that's something to be aware of when you're printing with, with hotter temperatures, but this will print nylon when I'm done with it. Uh, currently it could print nylon, um, but it will print nylon pretty well. It uh, will give me enough room to do much larger projects. I have a couple of things that I want to be building uh, for next year's Maker Fair. And this is, while this is still a little bit small for what I want to do, it will be, uh, it will be a huge improvement. Um, I am getting rid of the 200 watt power supply. I'm replacing that with a 350 watt power supply. The main board that is going in here will be the uh, Manta M8P version 1.1, um, along with the CB1, which is a uh, board which goes onto the Manta. And that's, that's very similar to the CM4 from Raspberry Pi. Uh, it is only a one gig board, but it has Wi-Fi and it works out very, very well. Uh, I'm running that on my system in the back uh, as well. So it, uh, it does work out quite well. Um, what else am I, I changing on this? Uh, so we are, we're going to keep, we're going to get rid of actually the power supply, all the power supplies. The, um, the board that is in here right now is a octopus. So we're going to be pulling the octopus out of here. Uh, we're going to pull the raspberry Pi board out of here, which I believe is a raspberry Pi 3B plus. Um, we're going to pull out the little 25, uh, watts uh, or 25 volt uh, power supply, five volt, 25 volt power supply that's in here for the Raspberry Pi. Um, we are going to keep the SSR, um, but there's gonna be uh, a lot of room under here because I can tell you from doing mine, there's a lot of room in doing mine. So um, by bringing this up to date, I'm still not sure if I'm going to be changing out the uh, center bar uh, or the centerpiece of extrusion or not, um, because I've got a lightweight extrusion on mine or a lightweight X, X gantry bar on mine, um, and it works great. But I think what I'm going to be doing, because I'm going to be getting rid of all of these cable chains with the exception of this one right here, um, actually, I won't need that cable chain either, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, 
I think what I'm going to end up doing is with the stripped down version uh, and the Rammel idlers, there's going to be a lot less weight on, on this gantry. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about doing was putting on the titanium strips for the gantry uh, to keep it from sagging when it gets too warm. I have that issue with mine right now. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about doing that or the anti-sag strips. I'm not sure if that's what, what they call them, but, uh, you know, that might be something that we do. Uh, what else is going to change the whole color of this with the exception of the black frame, everything is being changed to a two-tone blue. Uh, we're using the Polymaker Polylite ABS to do all of the parts on this. Uh, and they're coming out just beautifully. I, I couldn't ask for better parts. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of the Polymaker. Um, I will be doing some testing with the filaments.ca um, ABS Pro uh, filament that, that has just recently come out from them. And that should be a lot of fun. Uh, what else is changing on this? Um, yeah, it's going to get a, a big lightened load. I'm actually thinking of doing the 3D printed uh, top idlers on this because the top idlers, um, while now there's a screw that you have to adjust from underneath here, it can be a pain in the butt to do that. So there are ones that actually have a wheel. You can either get them um, made out of aluminum, uh, which are not a bad price actually. To be honest with you, there's a whole aluminum kit that's been made. I don't think I'm going to go that route, but uh, um, I am going to, there's somebody has, has designed the 3D printed version and uh, I might put the 3D printed version in. So it uses a wheel to actually move the Z uh, belts up and down, which will be very cool. Um, I might put that little round screen into the stealth burn or into the stealth burner um, status screen. I'm not sure yet. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to go that far, um, but I might do that. I might do that. We'll see what happens. Dimwit Smurf at the Wit 3D Canada. LOL. <laughs> Mark, it's a good thing that we're all friends. Uh, Tom Taylor, I missed you. I miss saying hello to you. Hello, Tom Taylor. Um, pick a Smurf. <laughs> pick a Smurf. There we go. Um, Jose Ferrari says, Pi 2, W, or Pi 3 are the minimum. Yeah, Pi 3 uh, would be the way that um, uh, I would go. Uh, with the with the CB1, it's like a CM4, a Raspberry Pi CM4, which is the compute module 4, for those who don't know. Uh, it's not a very big board. It's actually about a half the size of an actual Raspberry Pi. But because of the way that the Manta M8P board is set up, um, it has your USB on it. It has your HDMI. Um, it actually has two HDMI ports. The, I believe they have recently updated the firmware so you can start using um, Raspberry Pi cameras and, and the Raspberry Pi type screens uh, that have the ribbon cable. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, I believe that's, uh, that's also been done. Mine has a 7-inch touchscreen. I find it a little bit big and cumbersome. Uh, however, I may... I may end up changing that to a smaller screen. A 7-inch screen, while it's nice, it's a little bit cumbersome. I think I might change it out for a five inch screen um, at some point in time. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think that, uh, you know, doing upgrades like this, <laughs> you moved on to animals from Smurf. Uh, no one wants to get sued. That's true. Yeah. And we do have some animals. Um, I, I don't want to say too much yet, but I am contemplating doing a secondary channel. Um, I have a logo that's almost finished being designed. Um, and uh, I have a name, I've registered the name and it will all be, it'll be a channel that's dedicated to what happens after you make your print. Um, so all the finishing work, uh, all the sanding, all the 
how to make it pretty, if you're gonna put lights in it, if you're gonna use that, that 3D print for a project, um, that's what that channel will all be about. Uh, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. Now, with that said, I'm not gonna give you the name because I, uh, I haven't yet pushed that out, but um, you know, I, I would really appreciate everybody's hit the like button, wow. Small crowd today. This is very odd, very small crowd today. Uh, and nobody's really asked me any questions today. There's been a couple, but not very many. Not very many. That's sad. I'm sad. See my big bottom lip? I'm sad. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got uh, moving forward with uh, Maker Faire 2024, uh, which I am involved in again. So uh, we are going to do a much better job of streaming from the fair. Um, I'm working now to build up my equipment uh, so that I can have the equipment to take out onto location and, and have it set up. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. I don't think any, if anybody's got no, no more questions, I think we might just, uh, we just might call it. I'm gonna keep, uh, keep looking here real quick. Mark L. Baker, you need to phone me so that we can get together in the upcoming week so I can come over and fix your problem. I told you I would do that. So you just have to contact me, Mark. Um, it's your voice, Richard. It's like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> you can just keep talking and we're all just enjoying, enjoy, enjoying listening. Um, I appreciate that. I don't think I sound like Morgan Freeman, though. Yes, Mark, don't forget, you need to phone me. Um, I also need to get in touch with the young man from uh, Maker Fair. I believe his name was Aiden. Um, and uh, I need to get in touch with him because we want to go and do a uh, teenage makers space. This young man has a few printers now and he's doing a great job on producing products for his neighbors, uh, making a little bit of side cash, which is really good. So he's gotten the entrepreneurial spirit and he waited in line to talk to me at Maker Faire and uh, it was just a joy to hang out with him and talk with him. Um, Willard, Jay Sullivan, starting my first Pi 3B for Clipper on my CR10 V3S. That sounds cool. And welcome, Willard. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um... I'm, uh, I'm actually going to be putting, setting up Clipper for all of my other printers at some point in time as well, including my Prusa. Um, I know that I can, I can do that with the Prusa. Uh, I just have to decide how I'm gonna do it. Um, what is the support interface in Cura? What does it do? Support interface. Um, that support interface, what it is, is that's that little area between the top of the support and the portion of the model in which it is supporting. The bigger the distance, the more interface material you're going to have, the easier it is to fail and the um, more scarring you're going to get. So by reducing that interface, you can, uh, you can get a much cleaner print, but you don't want to reduce it too much that you can't get the support material off. That's what that is. Um, Willard says, I lurked into 5.3, or I lucked into 5.3, 3B pluses, or 3B pies uh, for free from work. Wow, awesome. Tim Post, my back, sorry, personal matters. No problem, Tim. That's no problem. We're just getting ready to wrap up here in a, about six minutes. So um, that's awesome. Willard, if they're all working for you, that's great. Do you know how to reverse throttle channel on an ARC boat or on a RC boat transmitter? No, but I'd love to learn how because I've got some RC projects I want to do going into next year. And uh, that's all part of, of some of the stuff that I want to do with the channel going into next year. Um, there's a lot of uh, little things that, that I want to get done in terms of, of uh, projects for not only for Maker Fair, but also for the channel itself. Um, I'd love to do an open RC. 
I'd love to do a drone. Um, and speaking of drones, the Poor Boy channel uh, does a lot of things with drones. Um, and I got to tell you that uh, Snapshot FPV is another one who does a lot of stuff with drones. Uh, Mark, the Poor Boy channel, Jeff and Mark, you guys get together because that will certainly help you guys. Um, or, yeah, uh, the Poor Boy channel knows more about remote control than I could ever know right now. I'm sure he's going to teach me as I go forward as well. But I want to do some drones. Uh, and the Poor Boy channel, um, he has a drone design that I'm going to try and print uh, and try and build up a little drone and see how that works. And, and the FPV is with, with the goggles, so I might have to make a little bit of an investment, but that's okay. Um, this printer, again, uh, it's got a really nice PEI sheet. It's textured on one side and smooth on the other. So, um, I think the other side, no, the other side is just raw metal, I think. I don't think it's got PEI on it. So I may have to do something there, but, um, and this one doesn't go all the way out to the edge. This is one of the early FormBot kits. Um, and while it was an okay kit, there were, you know, minor things that I didn't like about it. Getting this, this stuff off the edge here, this, I'll have to do something about that, but I think I'll, once I have everything off the rails, I'm going to re-lubricate the rails and make sure that they're all, all uh, done properly and uh, make sure that uh, everything works properly and that it balances properly and that sort of thing. So what I've got to do is I've got to finish taking this thing apart. Um, sorting all the parts, getting them into the right, the right bins, getting all the screws sorted, and then uh, um, getting the rest of the parts printed so we can start putting this thing back together within the next few weeks. Coming up on Wednesday, I'm going to be taking a deeper dive into the Manta M8P board from Big Tree Tech. That'll be coming out on Wednesday. Um, I've got some more videos that I'll be dropping throughout the week on little shorts, um, but uh, you guys are gonna see all that. We're gonna do some real good close-ups uh, with the microscope on the MAP board. I'm gonna show you where everything is. Um, we may even do, uh, in an upcoming episode, a quick dry run to show you how to connect everything before it goes into the printer, because I know that seems to be a big source of, of confusion with some people, is how do we connect all this stuff? Um, and I ha I'll admit, I've suffered from that myself. How do you connect this stuff? It just, it, sometimes it's a little baffling. So that's what we've got coming up, and I hope that you guys will check all those videos out as they come out. We're getting back to our regular schedule, dropping new episodes every Wednesday and uh, live streams every Sunday. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do a members live stream here pretty soon. And I think we're gonna do a meetup because I know all Mark L. Baker wants to do a meetup. Tim wants to do a meetup from three, DeWitt 3D. Uh, we have some other local Calgary guys that wanna do a meetup as well. So, um, we're going to do a, a meetup, and uh, I'm just trying to get that arranged so that we can do that meetup. And uh, last time I had a meetup, I think we had somewhere around 20 or 30 people show up. Um, and Jess was there, and Brian was there. Mark, no. Do you have Discord? Poor voices. Oh, okay. You guys are talking amongst yourself. Okay. Um, so we are going to do another meetup uh, probably closer to the end of summer, um, because I don't want to interrupt anybody's vacation time, so... Uh, summer is typically the slowest time for us, so um, watch for new content coming out, and uh, please uh, pass it on, share it with your friends that are interested in 3D printing. Uh, do that for all the channels, and uh, I do appreciate you guys. I hope that you're going to have the rest of a great day. Um, I wish I was there to meet up you guys. You're all awesome. Jose Ferreira, anytime you want to come to Canada, man. You've, uh, you've got a, a place to stay for sure. Um, I'm sure any one of us will, uh, will be happy to put you up and, and uh, you can come hang out with us anytime you want to come to Canada, my friend. You're always welcome. Thanks for the great stream. Looking forward to more, Accord says. Yes, we're back on, 
Jose says, long way from Portugal. Well, that's okay. I, I've known people from Portugal all my life. So, um, but uh, we would like, we would love it if you came. Thanks for the offer. Do it. Great fun stream. Have a fantastic afternoon, evening. Hey, everybody, make sure that you watch uh, DeWitt 3D coming up at uh, uh, 5 o'clock in about two hours. He's going to be coming up with his stream, and I'm not sure what he's working on. He might be working on his rat rig again, but please join him in a couple of hours, and uh, hopefully I'll make it there as well on time this time. And I will see you guys all next time right here on the first layer. Remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great 3D print. Until I see you guys next time, have a great weekend.